Hello there, welcome to Heart Explained Therapy and I'm going to reel off a list of things that you need to implement in your life to improve, to grow, to expand. And I'm going to start off with simple ones, I'm going to throw a few difficult ones in there and um, I work on a philosophy, a 369 philosophy, which means that you should be adding three positive habits to your life every single week and this doesn't mean that you end up with quitting your job because you have so many habits to do it means that you find the balance in a few months time of everything that you enjoy and is good for your well-being the reason why I suggest this 369 program and the 369 is three habits every six days give or take the ones that you do not like and accept new ones that you do like and improve and expand ones that you like and every six days for nine weeks and at the end of the nine weeks we formulate a plan for you uh, uh, your new diet habit whatever you decided to add and that becomes your new basically mental well-being and physical help. Now the reason why I believe that this is scientifically going to work is because it is thought that after three months of you and your mind more importantly learning any new habit it picks it up as a simple pattern system that is natural. So if you was to set uh, a sleeping pattern of going to bed at 10, getting up at 6 and this was your new uh, well-being habit to take on board. After three months it's scientifically proven that your body clock will reset and you will naturally, instinctively have that as a natural programming to you where you don't have to see at all. It's not a chore to go to bed at that time where you normally stop up till 12, 1 and you're all over the place. Sometimes you're up early, sometimes you need an afternoon nap. The mind is sleeping because the mind isn't doing something right. And this is what it's all about and this is what therapy is all about. It's basically learning these new techniques and you taking them into your life and then not need, needing a life coach, well-being coach or a therapist ever again and that should be the plan of every person's therapy that I only ever do a minimum of three sessions and you need to implement these in three separate two weekly sessions and we have consultations after that if you are struggling for any sort of areas phone calls and that's it you don't need to be spending too much money with these life coaches and these level three trained diploma idiots that are just wasting your time and probably just mirroring back questions that you're just telling them. They're not getting paid and they're not doing the right thing. I'm not saying all therapists are like this, but a majority of, their, of them don't really grab you, pick you up by the scruff of the neck and help you. And this is what you're going there for. So where would we start on this 369 plan and the first one that I mentioned as a theory, as an example, is actually my number one thing that I say to people. You have to get your sleeping pattern right. Now this doesn't mean what works for me is going to work for you. I'm a 10-6 person, that's my natural habit, my natural sleeping and I can adjust that and stay up till 11, 12, and then counter that by getting up at seven or eight. Uh, but this is sort of the my time frame of feeling good for the day that starts. Now, sleeping is crucial. When I don't do this habit, I find that I have no ability to catch my thoughts to be positive and to be motivated for the day. Sleeping is priority. You have to sleep like a baby. And if you say that you've tried this and you can't sleep, why can't you sleep? You'll have things going on in your mind that are not allowing you to sleep. You have to master sleep, rest the brain, recharge the batteries and start the day because 
Have you ever seen that meme where you're only ever fighting against your own mind? You're only ever fighting yourself. There is nobody in the world that can hurt you apart from yourself. This is true. So you need to put your mind and recharge battery in the perfect place to challenge this uh, universe or life or philosophy or whatever you think all this is. Number two, one of the rules that I set is uh, a little bit going towards a physical uh, aspect, but you need to exercise and eat healthy. Now, this is something that is just common sense and you don't have to be paid £100 per hour to tell this advice. But how many times do you not do this? You have to exercise and have a majority of exercise. Start off with a two minute walk or one press up. Um, recently got a client to start off with one press up purposefully. They laughed and said, that's stupid. Uh, why isn't it 10? Shouldn't it be 10? And I said, no, if I give you anything more than one, it could be unachievable. I want to give you something that I know you can do. And I knew, and I didn't tell this person this, that they wouldn't do one. When they do one, they would try again and they would end up doing three. And this is what happened. And this person came back and said, I did three. Brilliant. Start off with what you can manage and expand. You're not going to be able to do the monkey swings at the park on your first attempt, but you can do one press up, you can do a five minute walk, you can do stretches in the morning. Good habits and anybody uh, will tell you that the diet is almost 70 to 80% of your physical well-being. Uh, your food is important just as much as exercise. So check out what you do. Personally, I start off with protein in the morning, protein on the night. I think that's the best way for me. And again, be your own doctor. If that doesn't agree with you, find your own diet. No problem with that. Try all the stuff that you like. Drop the stuff that you just don't like. There's no sort of weight on your shoulders but we don't want the weight down here and that's an accidental pun that's just come in the, up in the video but we've got sleep, small amounts of exercise to start with and we've also got the diet. Three things that I always say is the three things if you can come back to me in two weeks and succeed with them or at least attempt them then I know I can work with you. If you come back and say you can't do any of them something that a ten year old child will do then there is no point progressing because you're not ready for change. And that's okay, except you're not ready for change because you might not be. You might have too much pain and trauma. And I don't want to dig that up if the ego isn't ready to die, which it essentially has to do. So just nice and easy, three simple things, have a blast. Then we go into some more difficult ones for the second session. Now I know that you can do the easy ones, I want to challenge you. I want to get you to do something that's going to just tiptoe into the shallow waters of uncomfortability to see how you can handle it. And hopefully I want to nudge you to the reward of the afterlife of that place. So this is where I will ask now for you to do certain things. Now if you know through the client's sort of therapist conversation that they definitely do something bad, like recently I had somebody who was obsessed with media, as in watching the news. It sounds so trivial and simple and, and we're drawn to this COVID news at the moment, but I realised just as it happened accidentally come up in a conversation that this was a habit that you must get rid of. Not saying that you have to avoid the news, but someone in a negative place cannot watch a negative other person, subject, object, whatever it happens to be. And for this case, it was the news. Limit yourself to five minutes of checking headlines. 
check the news that's important to you and you believe that alters you. A lot of the news doesn't actually affect you. Politics, nonsense, all that rubbish. On a deeper level, it doesn't really affect you, even though you think it might do. So remove something. This was a big thing. He would wake up and watch the news for an hour before work. He would even put the uh, news channels on in the car, on the radio. He would also listen to them during the work. He was just obsessed with news and media. And with a further bit of digging, we found out that he actually wanted to be a journalist years and years ago. And he was not, he had been consumed by the negativity of the news rather than follow his passion, which is something now he was able to work on with this realization. So not to go off on a tangent or anything, but the, the after the first two weeks, once you've done these easy things, I would then say, cut something out, a bad habit that you normally do, cut it out. Let's see how many days you can stop smoking. Let's see how many days you can stop drinking. If you have a takeaway three times a week, Let's see if you can come back to me and have none. Now, I don't expect anybody to achieve this brutal me removing something out of their life. I don't actually expect you to do it. And when you come back and say you haven't, it's exactly what I expect. But I want to see how much you've tried. Because again, you're highlighting me how much you really want to improve and let go of this mental health. We know the stories out there where we have helped loads of people and this has been by different circumstances that have just managed to click for this one person and they can live a different life this is a reality i'm looking for and again either way if you come back and even i've seen great achievement when someone has just stopped a bad habit for one day or two days it puts a little glimmer of hope in their mind that they can go a day where they never thought they could because they never tried, that's the truth. They've never been pushed. So then, a couple of weeks, you try and brutally take something out that you know is a bad habit, and I know that you know what is your bad habits. The people that you hang around with, the time that you waste when you should be doing something positive to yourself, you know exactly what this is. And now we go into a another realm of a habit that I would suggest on the second session, which is you forcibly add a replacement to that habit. So if this was quit smoking, you would drink a protein shake in its place. Or um, once a day, if you go the whole day without smoking. You've, again, this is more focused on an individual's perspective. But for you at home, when you remove something bad, you need to replace it. If you try and quit smoking, it, some people need vapes, tablets, uh, habits, elastic bands, all sorts of nonsense. So we make the plan together what you're going to replace the temptation of the negative thing with. Then, third session now, you've come back, a little bit of promise. I'm even happy if you haven't actually if you tried it and failed, I'm okay. And if you haven't done it, I've, I've tested to see where you're at. And then the third one, we're going for the big one. I know what it takes to improve and to be sort of, depending on what you have come for, your personal issue that you need coaching about, I would have summarised your best area to work on for your own self-improvement. And most of the time, it's actually always breaks down to one simple, incredible phenomena, which is you're actually quite unconscious to the way the world works. And you have to be aware. You have to become aware. And that doesn't mean everything. That doesn't mean three years going to India, taking ayahuasca and, and becoming a guru. It just means becoming more conscious of your own thoughts, the family and friends you hang around with. And this doesn't mean that you cut anybody out. It's not a brutal three sessions and your whole life is up in the air and 
because I know that would just cause you more stress. This is more letting you know that everything that happens is perfectly normal and in a way there is already a sort of pre-plan that everything was meant to happen and it also is very chaotic because it seems like nothing was meant to happen but the third and final sort of habits that I want you to start to introduce to your life after the more mental and physical process and the more brutally taking out a bad habit and replacing it with a good one is another major sort of heart and head surgery where you, I ask you to start being conscious of everything that you do and start to look at the way that the world unfolds for you feel the triggers for you and make a journal of this write them down what are you good at what are you bad at what are your goals and dreams and really get your life sort of into a package where we can process and move forward with some sort of grip and a plan on what we're going to try and do and be very flexible knowing this plan will change and chaotic events will happen and suffering and pain will happen and it's all going to sort of be ripped up but we we know how to write the plan every time the plan fails which it will do you won't always keep to habits you won't always feel great you will always have negative responses even when you're positive and the more you grow the more people will hate that because they're not growing and they want to know why you're growing so it sounds like a very difficult lots of things to do but I'm saying this baby steps gradually if it takes you two years to go one day without smoking that's where you're at I can't do anything about that I can't force your family and friends to do anything about that only you can do anything about you wherever you're at if you're not doing anything with your life it's because you don't want to and you can blame mental illness for that, you can blame your mental health for that, or you can even blame your circumstances and you can be a real big victim. But I can, I'm guessing your circumstances aren't that bad. I reckon you're pretty privileged, you're comfortable, you'll probably know that you've got friends and families who can support you and are probably are supporting you through this bad time. So now let's just wake up and let you have a life, not a life where your family are concerned about your depression and your anxiety or even worse, the concerned about your self-harming or you going quiet and hibernating for months on end drinking habits, smoking habits, you digging yourself to an early grave through eating loads of takeaways and putting on tremendous weight from past trauma let's truly smash this to bits with whatever plan you want to go this is a 369 plan that I've developed personally that I know works for me we can adjust it with anything I think it's flexible because it doesn't put any problem like in your head it's completely flexible I don't care what you do your life doesn't affect me I get paid either way if you come back and not have not done anything I'm actually quite kind and tell you that there's no point paying me for this second session because you haven't done something a 10 year old would do. It's brutally harsh but I ask you to come back and pay me the money when I know that I can help you. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a, Other therapists will take your money for six sessions. I've heard people are having six sessions with the same therapist. You do not need six sessions with anybody. You need in an ideal world one i offer free because of the package of information and this plan takes time encouragement help and it's flexible to change because of the individual and their life but it's frustrating it's difficult this world and this life is a lot of pain and suffering but you deserve to live life and that's the message of how you can do it, it's easy, 
gets a bit tough. But it's no tougher than you causing all that pain and grief for everybody around you. Have you even externally looked at that? If you're depressed, you won't be able to. But it's not nice for everybody around you. And I know that deep in your heart, it's not nice for you either. 